Hi, my name is Alan Glickenhaus. I'm the IBM API business strategist. Probably the question I'm asked more than any other one is what's the difference between APIs and services? Uh, this is especially asked by those people who have spent the last 10 or 15 years working on service-oriented architecture and services. Uh, so I thought we'd record a video and, and, and just in, uh, finally answer this question once and for all. And I threw in microservices as well, which is a new topic that's come up that we uh, get asked a lot uh, about the positioning as well. So, First of all, from an API perspective, so this is our definition chart for APIs. We talk about uh, APIs, application programming interfaces, and uh, really the term we should be using is business APIs or web APIs. We're distinguishing a business API from the traditional old technical API that has been around for decades. Uh, these are business assets that we want to make available in a self-service manner uh, for a particular audience. And so we want to package these assets up as a consumable entity that we call a business API and market this to an audience which is a, a, an app developer that's going to consume this API and use it. So business API is, is the context of what we're talking about with APIs. My previous role at IBM, I was on the uh, service-oriented architecture team for IBM and I use this chart a lot. And so we talked about a service as being a repeatable business task. Uh, something like check customer credit, open a new account, and so that sounds a lot like what I just said an API was. Uh, and, and so there's a, a little bit of uh, obvious reason why there might be some confusion. In fact, it gets worse. Uh, if you look at uh, what we were doing with SOA and services, uh, we mostly were using SOAP, uh, but you, in, the, in the more modern times have started to use REST there as well. In APIs, we most often use REST, but we could also use SOAP. Uh, the purpose for an API, I said, was to expose a business asset as an API. And for a service, we said to was encapsulate a repeatable business task as a service, which sounds very similar. And do they both do integration tasks? Yes, they do. So, so this is what's causing the confusion. And it's pretty easy to see why that someone who is very familiar with SOA and services might be confused by APIs. Uh, and isn't this something that they've already done and, and maybe this is just a new name for the same thing. In fact, what we've done is just look at what they have in common. Let's take a look at maybe some of the things that are different, right? So in the SOA world, the focus was on connectivity and reuse. We were building these services to drive reuse of these services. So we had a single view of an entity, a single view of a customer, a single view of an account, a single view of an order. And anyone who wanted the information about that particular asset would come and reuse that. And then we focused a lot on the connectivity of uh, the different services in that, uh, in that environment, typically inside the enterprise, dealing with the systems of record. The sharing was about effectiveness and cost. We were going to reduce the cost of future projects that we did in the enterprise. And most of the audience uh, that we were targeting the services for were internal. If we did make the services available to a few partners, it was difficult to do that. We had to set up the security and do some training for them to consume this, uh, this particular service. And so it was not something we could do for the masses. And the encapsulation aspect was about less to change. We were going to change what maybe was behind that service interface, uh, and we wouldn't have to change all the consumers of that, which is, uh, again, back to the cost issue. The focus for APIs is about consumption and speed to deliver. It's about reaching new markets. And the audience is internal, but it's more often and going to be a larger number of external users. So while we might start with internal, the focus is to get these assets out there to a much larger external community. And it's really about less to learn and, and speed and consumption. And that's really the focus for APIs. So if you think about these things working together, the systems of record that are running each of our businesses today are critical systems that can't go down, need high availability, high security, uh, we're going to have robust connectivity capabilities, and that was done through an enterprise service bus like the IBM integration bus. Big level of focus on governance to be sure that we got the services right and that we uh, didn't change them without concern for all the things that were consuming them, possibly you know, breaking if we made a, a, a bad change without testing it correctly. So systems of record, absolutely critical, uh, cannot go down, high security needs, lots of governance. Now along come things like mobile and social and big data and analytics and, and, and these things are moving at an incredible rate of speed and I can't change the systems of record at that kind of rate of speed. So to solve this problem and let the business do the things that they need to do quickly, we're going to encapsulate these systems of record services as self-service APIs that someone could sign up for and consume themselves. We're going to predefine the security 
aspects and the terms and conditions around that and make that available through an audience and a secure gateway that will access these backend systems. And so the idea here is that the APIs and services do work together. They're not one is a replacement for the other, and the APIs will be accessing the services from the systems of record. But we can change these things and we can create them on a much more rapid basis and make these things available in a self-service manner. So let's look at what these things have in different uh, have uh, as differences and not just what they have in common. So most of the time, uh, people who uh, worked on services were provider-oriented services uh, based on the system of record. If you had a customer system uh, uh, that had customer data, there might be one or more customer services that people would access. And if you needed customer information, you would come to the customer service. So it was a provider-oriented service. Uh, same thing for the account, for the inventory, for the shipping system. Any of these systems might have services that represented what the system did, and those would be uh, services that you would access to access those back-end systems of record. The APIs are consumer-focused, and if you think about what a consumer might do uh, with the back-end services, they will uh, access potentially more than one service. So in a scenario, for example, where I want to check my order status, I might have to check the customer service, I might have to check the inventory service, I might check the system, uh, the, the shipping service, all in one API call and not have three separate APIs for that person to do that. So one consumer-oriented API might call three or more back-end services to come up with the answer. From an integration perspective, while they both do uh, integration, SOA and services were very focused on integration and had a complete robust set of connectivity capabilities. Integration is not really the primary focus of APIs. We want to take an API call and get it into the back end as quickly as possible. It's about securing that and making it perform very well and, 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 uh, and making it consumable. It's not about complex integration. We do need to do some integration to get the API call to the back end, and so that minimal amount is done as part of the API uh, solution. Uh, why do you care? Connectivity and reuse is what we talked about for services. Self-service consumption, security, analytics, and speed for APIs. And finally, uh, for services, the focus is, uh, for governance is very strong. And for APIs, it's really just enough. We need to be able to move very fast in the API space to get to market very quickly. So there is a, a difference in perspectives and use cases for APIs versus services. And really, the best scenario is that we're using these together. So three questions lead to good APIs. The first question you want to ask yourself when you're thinking about what API you want to create is, who is the audience? What, what, uh, what audience are we talking about? Is this an internal uh, user that is going to build a mobile app or use it somewhere inside the enterprise? Is this a partner? Uh, am I making a public API? And the second question, probably the most important one, is what do they want? So we're focusing on that consumer. What do they want, not what do you have? Uh, we're not going to put an API in front of every service that we have and just say to the audience, uh, you figure out how to make these things work together. Uh, the better APIs are going to be consumer-oriented and mapped to mu potentially multiple back-end services. It might be the case that we're going to call one, one back-end service, and that's fine, uh, but let's not focus on what we have as the things that are driving the API creation. And then the third question that we're going to ask is, under what terms and conditions are we willing to share? And this deals with the security around the API, who's authorized to use it, and also the policies around the API, rate limits, how many times per minute, hour, second, whatever it is that we want to make it available. And so we'll uh, understand what conditions we want to make this available to them. And that's what leads to good APIs. After we've answered these questions, of course, then we have to build the API, and we're going to map the what do they want to the what do we have. But that's not something that should drive the creation of the API itself. So let's talk a little bit about how microservices fit into this. Uh, traditionally, every project that we've done uh, for the history of computing has three components to it. Uh, there's some kind of a user interaction in some way, whether it's a user interface or something that a user is going to interface with the uh, new project to tell you what they want to do. Uh, there's going to be some kind of business logic that they deal with that is going to make uh, the decisions on what should happen. And then maybe some data manipulation on the back end, some updates or some reads uh, that are going to get done to access and, and uh, massage the data in some way. And as we did these projects, we thought about it from an end-to-end -end perspective and we delivered that project as a whole. Uh, and that would take a certain amount of time to deliver. Whatever amount that was, we needed all the parts to come together to deliver the project successfully. 
With microservices, what we're going to do is do the exact same thing, but we're going to break it up into the component parts. So each one of the parts, the user interface, the business logic, and the data manipulation can be built separately by individual teams on a separate schedule with the idea that these will be working together, but also that others might use them as well. So if you think about this, uh, a mobile app, uh, let's say, is being created. It has a user interface. It's going to call in and do some business logic and do some data manipulation. And maybe that's the first solution you come out with. But the second solution might have the partner uh, doing something that's going to invoke that same business logic and that same data manipulation. In this case, you don't own the user interface. Someone else does. And you can come to market much quicker if you've built this on microservices as an architectural style rather than as a whole monolithic project. And really, that's what the, the trend toward microservices is. Let's think about the components that we can build together um, in consumable ways so that uh, we can uh, do projects faster and, and still get great results uh, for the enterprise. So how does that work with APIs? Uh, so the microservices can be built uh, either in the systems of record or in front of the systems of record based on your needs uh, and add the business logic for the user interface if you want to do that there, for the uh, business logic and for the data manipulation. And then you'll control the access to the microservice through an API layer that makes that microservice consumable by the audience that you want to consume it. So if you're making it available initially to the um, internal developers for the mobile app or the web, that's great. And then you want to make an API available to your partner to consume that same business logic, that's fine too. And you can have different terms and conditions for each audience. And so really that's how APIs and microservices will work together with the services in the systems of record uh, to provide a complete solution. And it gives us a tremendous amount of flexibility. Uh, it gives us the control and the, the uh, availability for the systems of record while giving us the speed and consumption and security that we want from a, uh, an API layer. And so think of an API as a, a managed microservice and you're, you're good to go for bringing these things to market. Hopefully that helped to answer this question once and for all. I'm sure it's not the last time I'll be answering it, uh, but uh, I'll be pointing people to this video so that they can see the answer for uh, positioning APIs and services and microservices. Thanks.